Hello. Welcome to Boston, Massachusetts. My name is John, and I am here with a Native American from the Pequot tribe in front of our local church. My fellow Puritans and I first arrived here in 1629, as we did not agree with King Henry's Anglican Church. When the white men first arrived on our land, we were unsure who they were. These strange people do not allow themselves to have many pleasures. It seems as though they are only allowed to eat, drink, and sing. However, I only ever saw them singing songs once, and it was just a religious song. Also, they always seem to be working, and rarely take breaks. I believe that they work hard because they want to glorify their God and bring prosperity for themselves and their family. What I found interesting was that the white men even taught their children how to read, so that they could read religious books and devote themselves to their religion. In this place, called the Bay Colony, Puritans and Indians are forced to live together, despite our differences. Our ways of life differ significantly. For example, the structures of our governments vary greatly. Our government allows white land downing men, like myself, to vote for governors. John Winthrop was our first governor, who served for 19 years. He was a profoundly devout individual who helped to found our society. Religion plays a significant role in Puritan lives. Our government is a theocracy that is based on God's law, which goes to show how religion and government are nearly synonymous. Whether one believes in our church or not, everybody must pay taxes to the church. This allows our colony to thrive. To be admitted into our church, one must show signs of conversion, which is where God shows us a sign that somebody is worthy of being a member. Back at home, the Church of England did not allow us Puritans to prohibit individuals that lacked a sign of conversion from entering the church. How unfair! Us Puritans also believe in predestination. Predestination is the idea that someone is chosen by God, at birth, to be sent to heaven or hell. One of our fellow colonists, named Anne Hutchinson, was a strong believer in this idea. Anne Hutchinson was too radical however, and she promoted an increased role for women in society. This contradicted the belief system of our theocracy, which does not regard women as proper citizens. For this reason, we decided it was in our best interest to banish her from the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Another one of our colonists, who decided to go against popular belief, went by the name of Roger Williams. Roger Williams was a devout separatist, who argued that our colony was stealing the Native Americans' land, which is preposterous. Before we could punish him for his new and radical ideas, he fled, like a coward, and created a terrible colony that went against most of our beliefs. The Native Americans, in my opinion, are inherently inferior beings who consort with the devil in the forest, which is filled with evil and sin. We thought that these white men would be our friends, but later found them to be enemies. Tensions rose between us because we both wanted to control the fur trade. The white men also started to take too much land and began to slaughter our people in cold blood. We then counter-attacked the Puritans, but soon realized we were heavily outnumbered. We began to run short on resources and decided to give up and move west. Did we want our land? Yes. But the costs would outweigh the benefits. The Puritan style of life significantly impacted the course of history, and influenced the paths of future societies.